All right, this time I want to talk about continuity, what it means for a function to be continuous. This is probably something you've seen before, the, the, the vague idea of it. We're going to be maybe a little more technical than, um, than you've seen before, although not extremely technical. Um, continuity. Continuity of a function. Um, the basic idea is a function is continuous. It's kind of like this. This is continuous. This is not continuous, all right? The, uh, I mean, informally speaking, a continuous function means when you look at the graph, it's like one continuous, one continuous line with no jumpy things, no breaks in it or anything. This one is not continuous because of that thing right there, the, the curve breaks apart. Some people say things like you can, continuous function means you can draw the graph without lifting your pencil or something like that. Now, this might seem good enough as a definition. That's what continuous means. But it's actually not a very good definition because uh, I'm not using mathematical terminology when I say things like there's no jumpy things. Or, I mean, the first thing I said is continuous function means like the curve is one continuous thing. But I just used the same word again. I hope you know what I'm talking about. But um, I also hope you agree that that's not a real definition. So we're going to get into the details. Okay, what does it really mean? Here's the definition, the actual, um, you know, more complicated definition. So first of all, before we talk about continuous overall, um, but this example I just showed you, there is usually a specific point at which the graph fails to be continuous, a point where the, the uh, curve has a break in it or something. So that's, that's what we're going to talk about. So here's, here's the definition. Um, we say f of x, some function, is continuous at a point A, so you imagine like a specific x value, and you say this is continuous at this specific point, if, if and only if, this is the definition, three things have to be true in order for it to be continuous at a point. First of all, f of A exists, that is the function actually has a value at that particular point. If there's no value, uh, then the function is automatically, you say, it's not continuous. That, I think about it. If there's no value of the function, that means automatically there's like a hole in the graph, not continuous. Okay, what else needs to be true? The limit as x approaches a of f of x exists. That is, not only is there a value at this point you're thinking of, but there are also values at all the nearby points, all right? The curve approaches this point in a nice way, and it approaches some kind of value at this point. And the third property is that these two things are equal. So f of a is equal to limit x goes to a of f of x. And I hope that this makes some kind of sense. What does it mean that the curve has a nice continuous thing with no breaks in it? It means when you look at the actual value at any particular point, that is the same as what the curve values approach when you get near that particular point. That is to say, every time you approach something, well, the value at that particular point is actually right there. It's not somewhere else, right? And that's what, it, that's what you should feel like continuity means. It means when you approach a point, that's what the actual value is. It's not something else, all right? So, like we saw before, an example of something which is continuous is something like that with no jumps in it. This is continuous. That's because, like I said, if you choose any uh, value a, say, and a refers to an x value, the value as you approach this point along the curve, the y value, is the same as if you just look at the y value at a, all right? How could this fail? Let's have some examples where it doesn't work. There are three things that need to be true in order for a function to be continuous at a particular point. Let's, let's just look at how, how this could go down in this case where it's not continuous. So, for instance, here's a function which does, let's say, this right here, all right? This is my f of x. Okay, is it continuous? Um, well, you know, technically you say, is it continuous at a particular point? It is continuous at all of these points over here, because it's a nice curve with no, no nonsense. Also continuous at all of these points over here, but it's not continuous right there. So in that case, we say f is discontinuous at x equals 1, all right? That's where the 
bogus uh, action there happens, okay? And you should say specifically, what's the problem? Why is it discontinuous? Which one of these things, um, perhaps more than one of them is not true, but which one of them is not true? Let's just look at this. First of all, f of a exists. In this case, um, the a I'm considering is 1, right? That's the x value. Um, is it true that f of 1 exists, or does f of 1 not exist? Well, if you look at this, actually f of 1 does exist, because the empty circle, the filled-in circle, this value down here is f of 1. And I, I didn't give the y values, but let's say it's like this, right? So f of 1 equals negative 2, the y value there. So actually, the first point does hold, all right? The value does exist. What about the limit? Uh, this one actually does not exist. So limit as x approaches 1, because 1 is the, uh, the a value I'm using here, of f of x. This one does not exist. That's because of the two sides here. From the one side, you get one limit. From the other side, you get the other limit. Overall, the limit does not exist. All right. So actually, this middle one is false. That's why it's not continuous. And the bottom one is kind of automatically false also, just because this thing isn't doesn't even exist, so you can't really say if they're equal or not. All right. Anyway, that's why this one is discontinuous. Let's just look at another. Okay, here's another example. This one also is not continuous. Maybe I, I gotta put some values in here. Where's the point? Where's the x value where it's not continuous? It's this point right here where this weird action is happening. Everywhere else it is continuous, but right here it's not continuous. So this is not continuous at x equals uh, 2, right? This x value here. That's what the, uh, the a here is going to be 2 in this example. Let's, uh, again, let's just talk about which of those things is or is not true. The first one, does f of a exist? In this case, I'm looking at f of 2. Is there such a thing as f of 2 here? Uh, there is actually, when you look at x equal 2, it has a y value. It's this one rather than that one. That's what the filled in circle means. And it is 3. All right. How about this one? The limit as x approaches 2, does that exist? Well, let's check it out here. That means as you get closer to, you look along the curve, does the curve actually approach a particular value? And the answer is yes, it approaches this one, y equals 1. As you follow along the curve, it actually does have a coherent value, and it is 1. So actually the first two are both okay. What about the third one? Is the third one true? Uh, well, no, it's not, right? Because this f of a is 3, we just decided, and this uh, is 1. Is it true that 3 equals 1? No. So that's why this is not continuous. Uh, so this exists, this uh, also exists, but the third property is not true. So f of 2 does not actually equal limit x goes to 2 of f of x, right? Because the left side is a 3 and that's a 1. So not continuous right there. You know, typically it's pretty easy to tell by looking at a graph if it's continuous or not. You just kind of look for the funny business, all right? If you have any points which are not along the curve or the curve is breaking apart at some point, it's not continuous there. And you can say specifically if you want to which of the properties are, uh, are violated, all right? Next, I want to talk about what about if I just show you the equation of something? Can you tell me where it's continuous or not just by looking at the equation, all right? It's easy enough if you look at a picture. What about equations? I want to talk about, for instance, something like what is, you know, f of x equals x squared plus, no, minus x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, okay? I want to know what points, at which points is this continuous? How can you do it? Well, there's a general sort of a principle here. Just like when you look at the curve, you look at and see where, if there's any kind of funny business going on here, you can do the same thing here. There's a general principle that um, is going to uh, serve us well here. So um, here, I'll write it down and I'll say it out loud. Okay, in any ordinary equation, I'm using this in a non-technical sense. So I just mean any any equation that you're likely to see in a in a typical, you know, uh, single uh, any equation that you're likely to see in a typical calculus class. In any ordinary equation, f of x is continuous at all points in its domain. So if I ask you where is this function continuous, where is it not continuous, that's the same as just asking you 
Um, what is the domain of the function? That means what are the allowable x's which you are allowed to plug in here? So what you have to do is you look for um, possible problems. Like, am I allowed to plug whatever number into this formula that I want to? Or are there some specific values for which you're going to have issues if you try to plug them in here? Um, specifically, what I mean by possible problems, the most common thing that we're going to look for is zero in the denominator. All right? This is not allowed. You're not allowed to have a fraction with a zero in the denominator. So that's one thing, actually, in this example that could go wrong. All right? Look for possible problems. I mean... Are there any x values which lead to getting a zero in the denominator? Uh, it is actually possible in this case. Other possible problems. This is like this is like what's usually going to uh, occur to us um, in the ones that we're looking at. Um, other other things that could happen would be uh, negative numbers inside of a uh, square root sign or some other radical. All right, that's another thing that you want to watch out for when you're trying to figure out what's the domain of this or that function. Anyway, let's try to do this one. Um, where are the places where you could have a problem with this? Well, the only there are no square root signs, so you don't have to worry about that. Only thing that really could go wrong is if you tried to plug a zero into the denominator, all right? And what are the uh, values which will make the denominator zero? The answer is two, okay? So this is, the answer is two is the only place where it's not continuous. This is continuous. Usually you're going to state your answer in this way. This is continuous for all real numbers except 2. Right? 2 is the only number which is going to screw that formula up. There's no other thing that could possibly go wrong other than you getting a 0 on the bottom. All right? That's all there is to it. Sometimes they, uh, you know, you'll see a question tell me where is the function discontinuous. That's the opposite. So you would say this is discontinuous when x equals 2 and nowhere else. Right? Um, let's try a slightly different one. Or let's try another one. Uh, that one was pretty easy to see where the denominator was 0. Sometimes it's a little less obvious. How about um, f of x equals, let's say, x plus 5 over x squared minus 3x minus 10, all right? Um, okay, now, can you just sort of, can you tell when this denominator is going to equal zero? Not so easy to just guess it, although, I mean, maybe you could try and uh, guess some numbers that make that zero. Better idea, let's just figure out when that thing equals zero. The way you do that is set equal to zero. Anyway, the question is, say, where it's continuous, all right? And I'm going to do that by, my answer is going to be all real numbers except, blah, 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 where the except is, where that is zero. So how do we tell when this is zero? You just set equal to zero and then solve for x. How do you solve that thing for x? You've got a factor, right? Um, that means you, you do like this, right? x, blah, blah, x, blah, blah. You need two numbers. They multiply to be 10, but they um, their difference is, is 3. They multiply to be minus 10. Um, so one's, uh, I think it's going to be 5 and 2, right? Uh, and to, to get negative 3 when you add them up, you want minus 5 and plus 2, right? And then you solve for x. So x minus 5 is 0, x, minus, uh, x plus 2 is 0, so x is 5, and x is minus 2. There you go. So my final answer, these, remember, these are the points where it is not continuous. So my answer is um, f of x is continuous everywhere except x equal 5 and x equal minus 2. Okay, one more type of example. I said the two things to look out for is zero in the down there and also negative number inside of the square root. We better just, let's just do one which has negative numbers inside of the square root. So, Again, the question is, where is it continuous? Let's try f of x equals square root of um, 4 minus 3x. All right? So uh, here, the issue is the square root sign. When you see that square root sign, you know the thing inside of the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. What does that mean about x? 
uh, you know, certain x's are allowed, certain are not. Like x equal 1 is allowed because then it would say 4 minus 3 times 1, which is 4 minus 3, which is 1, and that's okay. But say x equal 2 is not allowed because then it would be 4 minus 6 in here, and it would be negative inside the uh, square root, not allowed. Exactly which x's are allowed, you can do that by setting up a little inequality, right? 4 minus 3x needs to be positive, and now you can solve the inequality for x. Uh, how do you do that? Let's subtract the 4 over here. You know, working with inequalities is basically the same as working with equalities. Divide the minus 3, and now you have to remember the first rule of Fight Club is when you divide by a negative number or multiply by a negative number, you switch around the uh, inequality. So it's like this. Minus 4 over minus 3. It's like that, see? Uh, you know, you can cancel the minus signs if you want. X less than or equal to 4 thirds. And this is basically the answer. So where is it continuous? You say f of x is continuous. Come on now. For all x less than or equal to 4 thirds. Or you could say another way of saying the same thing. Sometimes you'll see this if you look up in you know textbooks or whatever. You can say it is continuous on the interval. On the interval minus infinity to four-thirds, right? This means it's continuous for all numbers uh, up to four-thirds uh, at the top and then everything less than that, right? There you go, that's how we do it.